Hello everyone, welcome to Old Bluff. I've got a long log that I'm bringing in for cutting top plates for my log walls on the cabin build that I'm doing. This log measures 31 feet 8 inches, so it's a good bit oversized for the sawmill here. I really don't want to do anything any longer because this was kind of a pain to do. It took a little over three hours, about three and a half hours close to it to start to finish. But uh, I've got uh, the plates that I'm doing on these longer walls. Actually, the top plates would need to be about, I'd probably, I've got two inch overhang that I'm doing on this cabin build, and I'd have to have two foot overhang, I'm sorry, um, 34 foot in length. So I'd probably want to do 35 feet or close to that to do those top plates. But I think I'm just going to piece those top plates. I'll do a bypass joint, like a Dutchman joint, and do it horizontal so that you only see a vertical joint where the laps are in the center of the logs anyway. So I'm wrestling this thing. It's about 18 and a half at the small end diameter and the butt end is about 21. It's got a little bit of wave in it, but it's plenty for what I'm needing here you can see I've got the laser that I'm looking at to set the pith of this. So I'm just looking down the side of the log. You can see it on that metal post there at the end. So I just kind of line it up to where the, I think the center of the log is at. And that's close enough on this. But it shows up good. Now I've brought it up to where I'm going to make that first cut. And I can see down at the far end that uh, laser mark on that metal post there so I can tell it's going to cut leave a little bit up there I do have some wane on that far end but it's not enough to throw things out you can see these flitches I've got I'm cutting them pretty good size I'm going to come back and cut one by sixes for my roof decking I've got to have about 300 18 foot one by sixes to deck everything this cabin is going to actually have two deck surfaces one over my timber trusses on the inside then I'll come back and build a conventional 2x6 roof on top of that that I can insulate get my electrical in and come back and deck over that and put the metal roof on it so here I'm making a first cut on here and I've sped everything up so it wouldn't take so long this it's really a, a lot of work I had a lot of adjusting and supporting the log out on the far end and just like I did on the 24 footer, I brought the big end, the butt end of the log, in to the operator side so I'd have more weight there to hold up the uh, extended end out at the tail of the sawmill. This worked out good. But once you get it to a cant, everything's pretty easy. You're just sliding it forward to finish your cut. But it's a lot of nip and tuck. I had to take the chainsaw, you'll see here in a minute. I'll cut this flitch down as far as I can, just stop, cut that flitch off, draw it out, and throw it out back, and see I'm cutting it there, and spin the log, and just keep doing that around and around until I get all four sides done, and then come back. All I can do is slide this log up about six feet when, I'm, uh, when I finish that first can't on the lead edge of the log so I had to slide the log two separate times you know you have to when you finish those the cuts on the far side I have to obviously come back and set back down on the log to the finished dimension that I'm cutting to for this cant and uh, push the log that six feet finish that cut because it wants to, it hits on the uh, bunks for the sawmill. Uh, as far as the distance that I can move, it's just kind of restricted to that. So I, you know, you just have to make two separate cuts on that far end to get it done. So it's kind of time consuming. Each one you have to cut all the way around. 
make one cut, flip it, make the next cut, just finish out that cut, then slide the log forward. But once you get it, this long log down to a square can all the way through, it's not that bad. You know, you just go down as far as you can. I shut the sawmill off. I leave my clamp dog open as I'm cutting. That way when I get to the end, I can just take the skid steer and push the whole log back. Here you can see this big long flitch. I'm having to pry it back with a long pry bar, which worked pretty good. Once you make that chainsaw cut, it gives you enough room to get in there. So it's not it's just more a time consuming thing to do rather than any kind of hard work with it. <clears throat> so I've got that one cut. And we're going to rotate it up. I'll set the pith again and uh, start cutting on this one. You can see how that weight on the far end really tries to bring the top of this log up towards the saw head. I've got it, think, all the way back. And I raise it up. You'll see in a couple of instances I forgot to raise the saw head up. So you got to be careful with that. Everything you have to watch with this. It's just time consuming. A lot of little nuts and bolts to it so you just got to pay attention you can see I got a good bit of sweep in this log so I'm going to adjust it a little bit to try and get it as good as I can but this log's big enough where I get two finished five by six and a half six and three quarters and I get about five or six one by sixes and well actually I got one by tens out of it which I'm going to use for siding on my gable ends i'll come back some of them had a little bit of wane on them but i'll be able to come back and dress them up and put my uh, bark lines at live edge back on the siding i thought that would look good on the gable end so here i'm making this cut you can see i've got it braced up on that far end with the sawhorse a couple of spacers it's just kind of an added extra precaution there to make sure that log doesn't move as I'm cutting or anything. Here I'm prying this flitch back to get it out of the way. Just enough to get that drawback arm down inside there is all I need so it doesn't take much. I think I moved it about five or six inches. That worked out pretty good. Now we'll flip it over and make that last cut on this first section. Like I say, it took three and a half hours to cut this log up. And that's start to finish. That's bringing it in, cleaning my mess up. I got a good bit of mess under the sawmill. I'm going to have to take time to clean all that up. I don't like leaving it. I blow it off every day. But all that accumulation underneath there, I don't like having all that. Don't want the hydraulic arms hitting on it or whatever. Just a mess. You can see it all under there. So I'm... Cutting everything oversized, I've got, I don't remember the exact dimensions, but I cut this thing big enough where I'll have two, two and a half inches on each side to come back and cut off because I do leave some, you'll see them later in the video, I leave some marks where I cut a little bit too deep with the chainsaw, so all that will come off. And I'm at the close to the 20 foot mark now. These one by sixes and siding that I need, they're only I only need them 18 feet long. So it's worked out good for that, getting these one by sixes cut out of what I'm pulling off. There you can see that's about the, as far as I bring it back to get the uh, drawback arm down in there to push these rascals out of there. Beats having to handle them anyway. It sure does come in handy having that takeoff conveyor and ejection conveyor out there. I just don't have to fool with anything. It makes it a little bit easier anyway. So I'm inside turning the log or whatever I'm needing to do. So here you see I take precious and slide this up six feet to make this next cut. Without precious, I couldn't handle this thing. There's no way I even attempt it. She doesn't mind. You can see where I come into that bed rail. 
and stop right there. Obviously, that's as far as I can go. Now, I raised up those uh, roller tow boards so that it rolled a little bit easier. You can see I'm leaving that clamp dog loose on this. Actually, I, I clamp this off after I get finished um, dressing the can all the way down the length of the log. I leave that clamp dog loose where I can push the log forward. This thing's so heavy, it's not going to move anyway. And here, I just drop right back down. I remembered the dimension that I was at. I made sure to do that. And I just drop right back down to it and finish the cut. As long as it's sitting on those bed rails, the length of the sawmill towards the operator side, I know I'm still making a good straight cut on it. Here I'm cutting off that little short section. Get it out of the way and we'll be ready to roll the log over. Like I was saying, you, know, you have to just keep rolling it all the way around until you get all this can't dressed off. It's a lot to do, but it's not that bad. You know, I was, was not looking forward to it <laughs> to begin with, but everything worked out pretty good with it. There's a little bit of the flitch there that I'm going cutting off so I can push it up the full amount. That's just what was left that I couldn't get to without drawing the saw head back. You can see I'm getting ready to roll this log. Now this thing is, you got to stay out of the way. A couple of times I get hit in the shoulder. One or two times it about knocks me over. <laughs> this one right here looks rough. It is dangerous, but I make sure to stay enough out of the way where I don't get clobbered with it. But it, that's a lot of weight you're slinging around up there. So I get the saw head moving forward and inch it down as I get closer. And then I finally start the blade about a foot or two out. And it just drops right back down in. So it works out pretty good. All this wane that I'm leaving on the log, like I was saying, it'll work itself out in the end. Because I'm winding up with 1x6s for decking, which it won't matter that much on. I can flip them over and use the back side if I want to. Only one side's going to show inside. I'll leave a good size exposed there. But the 10-inch lap side, and you see there, I forgot to raise this all head up. I do that several times. I catch myself. There's a lot of little nuts and bolts to it, like I was saying. you got to watch out. Looks like that thing's about to jump all over me. It does. It knocks me down once. You'll see it later in the video. But anyway, if you ever have an opportunity to cut these big 31 footers, I highly recommend you don't do it because it's a, it's a pain. But it's something that I had to have for this cabin build. I was going to piece some logs at one time, but I just decided against it. I thought I've got the long logs already down, so I just bucked them where I needed to. You can see there'll be a good bit of wane left on some of these, but then when I come back and cut the finished boards out of it, it'll take away most of it. They all wind up with good beams. Actually, these are the top plates to the wall is what I'm working on here. But these dimensions worked out good. I've got uh, nine inch lap siding that I'm needing for the gable ends this five inch by six and three quarter beams that I'm working on here that five inch dimension two of those coming out of this that leaves me that ten inches that I can cut down to nine is probably what I'm gonna do that way I've got plenty of overlap and you can see that chainsaw mark right there below where I'm at see I'll come back when I dress the log off cut that off I got a little frisky with my chainsaw so here's the last push to get this thing squared up. I'll get it just past that tape that Woodmiser includes on the tail end of the sawmill to indicate where the blade winds up. So I've got plenty of room here. You can see that tape. I've got a good five inches there at the tail end. That way I can get off the log. I don't like going the full amount. Here you can see on my takeoff conveyor, I was fortunate that I, it's actually like an eighth of an inch lower than the bed rails on my sawmill, so that worked out good in that regard. 
But I, like I say, I, I don't like running logs the max length that the sawmill will handle because you can't hardly get on or off the logs. You just don't have much room to work with. I like to have several inches. That way you can kind of blow and go if you're cutting your one buys or whatever out of your logs. That's usually what I do. I leave my finished lumber on the sawmill. I don't take them off in pieces. You can see there I forgot to raise that saw head again. I do that several times. So I'm getting it up. That could thing kick me like that. That thing will get you. There's so much weight there. So I'm getting close on this one. But I'll get it down to a cant. And you'll see that it's a lot easier. I do have to move the log back and forth for each cut. Because I have to come out and start obviously on the lead edge of the log. And then I'll have to stop leaving that clamp dog open, push the whole log and saw head back towards the operator side just to finish my cut for the length that I'm working on. And you'll see that as we get to it. I'm just trying to get this thing positioned where it's fairly straight. See, I leave that clamp dog a little bit loose. One thing, too, you can see I'm checking there just to make sure that there's nothing on the bed rail between the log because I don't want to have to come back and straighten out a side. So I really took extra care in making sure of that just to keep me from having to do extra work straightening this thing out. I remembered to raise the saw head that time. Now I've got most of the weight back towards the operator side and that really makes it awkward in trying to flip it. Now, I did most of my flipping. I did it in a combination, mostly with the clamp dog, but I did use the chain turner to help assist when it got in a bind. One thing about that chain turner, being able to rotate it forward and backwards really helps in certain situations if you're getting a predicament. But this all worked out pretty good. It's just time consuming. Like I say, it's just something that I had to have. I've got to have six 31 foot logs and nine 24 foot logs. So all of these being over the size of the sawmill, it's just something that you have to grit your teeth and just go at. I don't have any choice about it. But overall, it's worked out pretty good. I only get a couple of them cut a day. So I try and it's been raining a good bit here. Kind of muddy outside. So I bucked these logs out in the field and brought them up. So I don't have far to go out and get them. I'll uh, grab one in, drag it in. And I cut them long just so I could drag one in. I pick one end up with the skid steer and drag the other on the ground, when I get it in, I'll go on and cut about six inches off. As long as I leave that 31, I think these are 31, this one is 31.8. I cut it about 32, just knowing that I was going to drag it on the ground, because I wasn't expecting the precious to pick this thing up, just stroll through the woods with it. I couldn't get through most of it. I have so many trees along the little road that I've got leading back to where we cut these trees. So this is a one by that I'm getting, so I'll be using it for siding. No, that's just a sliver. That's just an off cut, getting it down to size. So it looks like I've got this one cut all the way around, so I'll be sliding it down. See, I'm grabbing it with precious and dragging it back to the starting point up there at the operator side where I can get my saw blade on it, get it all adjusted, get set up. It's just a lot of nip and tuck with this thing. Actually what I did, I brought it back centered up in the sawmill to rotate it. And I'm going to get it to where I'm cutting. There it was where it knocked me down. It, end of it there kind of kinked out a little bit. I think it hit the roller frame for my 
seat attachment that I did. So now that I've got it rotated, I'll slide it down so that that operator side is in the right spot where I can drop my saw blade down and get back on it. It's just a lot of nip and tuck, a lot of little things to keep up with. That's why I took my time and making sure everything was set up. At one point, I come out here on this tail end and jack it up. I've got a little floor jack sitting there just to make sure once you get it cut down, you know, the more you cut it, the more flexible it becomes. So I didn't want this far end out here drooping down much. And I got to where I started stopping before I got to that last movable bed rail. I felt like if I stopped right there at the stationary bed rail, I'd be more likely to keep a straight cut going. Back when I cut that 24 footer, I tried to cut on out as far as I could, but I saw that it was making my saw blade rise up too much on the cut because that end was actually bowing down somewhat. But this worked out pretty good here. You can see I'm coming on out with this one all the way. But I finally figured out I'm stopped short because I'm pushing it up anyway. So you can see I'm pushing it a lot more than that six feet just so I can finish the cut out. So I, as long as I get it past that blade indicator on the uh, frame there, I know that I'll have enough room to get out and get back off of this. I think with this one I'm getting a full one by ten, one by ten and an eighth, but I'll come back and edge it to nine inches. I believe that's what I'm doing with this, and then I'll come back the other direction. I think that one's a little bit thicker. This might be the two and a half inch. We'll see. Yeah, I believe that is. Yeah, that's the two and a half inch section. So I'll get two one buys out of that for the siding. And see, I'm cutting it, cutting it at about 18.6 because all I really need is 18 foot decking. That'll give me enough to break on all my rafters and extend out far enough for my overhang that I'm doing on the cabin. But once you get the flitches off and get it to a good cant full length, it's not that bad. It's just time consuming like anything else. I'm just getting it positioned. You see I raised up those roller tow, tow boards and I'm able to push it out myself. The more you cut off of it, obviously the lighter it gets, so I'm able to work with it a little bit. But it does make it want to bow a little bit more. So I look down it with the laser, put my eye on it. And if there is any bow in this far end, you can see I've installed that jack and brace on this far end. To just make sure that I'm not getting any slope in the cut out here at the tail end of the machine. Then as I push push the log forward obviously it's going to be sitting up on the bed rails at that point not really worried about it so to finish out that straight cut and I'm everything that I'm cutting on this I'm trying to stay right around 30 percent on the engine load meter and that's just a good way of keeping up with what kind of pressures you're putting on your blade this knotted pine it's pretty hard and starting off you know it's pretty wide pieces so I, I just try and keep it to a happy medium somewhere between 30 and 34 percent and it just seems to make a straighter cut no matter what you run into and if I do have any big knots a lot of times I'll slow down just a little bit just to make sure that the blade doesn't dive or rise up on those now we got it pushed in and set it ready to go again. And I believe this might be where I'm splitting this log is what it looks like. So this may be the final cut on this one. 
I actually got two of these two and a half inch pieces and I believe that's what's happened there. I've already set one on the ground then I've set this other one on the lift arms. Yeah, those are finished logs there so I'll pull them back and peel one off. I tried carrying these out together like that with this attachment but it just seemed to bow too much and I certainly didn't want to break these on the knot so I just decided to set them down and just do one at a time and that, that worked out good I just got them out to the outside of the sawmill building and then grabbed them in the center with the clamp and took it out to the storage shed you'll see that coming up so I'm pulling this one off I'll get it to where I can grab it along the center line with the clamp itself to move around to the side it's just less likely to break it but I'll pull it out like this I think I'm setting this one off and I'll go back and get the other one about run out of room in sawmill though these 31 8 logs they take up a lot of room you gotta watch it coming out of the door you can't turn too quick you can knock something down in a hurry I had to push my burn pile back a little bit it's about 30 feet I think from the sawmill maybe 35 but you know the length of that skid steer it all kind of gets in your way back there when you're coming out with these 31 footers you can see how I've clamped on to the center of the beam to bring it out and I've already got the first one sitting there I've got my little stickers on there so I'll set it down here and then grab it from the end set it up on top of this other one you can see I've got a good bit already cut some 24 footers different dimension uh, finish logs and uh, cap logs actually starter logs too but uh, I had to have a handful of these 31 footers to keep from piecing things too much but I plan on the top plates to let them stick over on the front and the back of the building to help hold the soffit line up. And it's not soffit, it's actually the eave of the house, but I thought just notching that and letting them extend that 24 inches would help hold that decking up and the bar drafter out on the end. Oh, precious shield, just grab that thing and finagle it right in there. This one kind of wants to roll with me. You'll see that coming up, but we managed to get it on there. Got a little bit of mud on it here and there, but uh, everything's still got a plane. I've got to put that hand hued finish on it. And then the top surfaces, obviously they'll just be sitting on chinking of the concrete itself. Watch this technique. Look at that roll. Yeah, you can't beat that. It's just dumb look, but it worked out. You know, come grab it along the center line and ease it forward, get it up on these other stickers. Then I'll go back in and finish edging out my other material. I've only got about six more of these long logs to cut. And I'll be ready to start stacking out my logs on the cabin itself. What I've decided to do, I'm going to just do corners. Build the corners up as high as I can up to the top of the windows and doors and stop, move to another corner and get everything down to the cap logs, the plates that I put on. I think that'll be the easiest way. That way I'll get more distance around the building. I can cover these corners up with plastic as I get them done. Like I say, I've only got a handful left, so we'll see how that goes. Well, I appreciate you guys watching today's video, and if you like the video give us a thumbs up maybe subscribe definitely hit that notification bell so you'll know when we've got other videos coming up so until next video you guys take care and be safe out there y'all come back now mm -hmm.